Greetings, everyone. My name is Vignesh, and today I'll be talking about how to get your enterprise ready for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So uh, I'm an enterprise architect and also a technology strategist. So I'm a Microsoft MVP on M365 apps and services and also on security. So let's get started. Well, I want to begin with this, uh, you know, quote, right? So in the rate to succeed, don't forget to tie your shoelaces. Well, that's what pretty much this entire session is all about, right? So we all, uh, you know, are in this race, uh, or let me call it as this AI race. We all understand the impact uh, generative AI is, is having on the industry, uh, on our business processes, so on and so forth, right? Uh, we all understand that that is some. This is something that we all want to get into, but we need to make sure that uh, you know there are proper governance or there are proper security standards and control, you know, before we even dive deep into it. So this entire session uh, is about that, like how to get your enterprise. That's why exactly I named it as how to get your enterprise ready for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So, uh, all right. So let's go forward. So a little bit about myself. Well, in fact, that's a lot about myself. So I, my name is Vignesh Ganeshan. As I said before, I'm a dual Microsoft MVP and I'm also a Microsoft MCT. Uh, in my current role, I work as an enterprise cloud architect and a technology strategist. Uh, I used to blog a lot. I used to be a frequent blog a few years back. I used to blog on Vignesh SharePoint Thoughts, European SharePoint Community, C Sharp Corner, Collab 365, and Hubfly blog site. Uh, but now I spend most of my time speaking on webinars, user groups, uh, conferences across the globe. So I don't blog a lot as I used to blog uh, before. I'm also the ambassador for uh, AMS community. I've completed more than 20 plus Microsoft certifications over the years. And I'm also the founder and chief organizer of the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Cloud Security India user group. So that's the user group that uh, you know that I own. When I say I own, it's a few more MVPs who all come together. So we all run this user group, and there are a lot of events that we do as a part of this user group. Uh, so one of this very event that we all are currently a part of, the Microsoft Copilot in Viva Days, is organized by this user group. And there are many other events also that we do every year, such as the India Cloud Security Summit, um, the Microsoft Purview Days. Uh, you know, so there is a lot of such uh, events and also webinars that we keep organizing frequently. So if you, if at all you're not a member of the user group, please, please make sure that uh, you know you click on that link, or maybe you can just go to Meetup, search for Microsoft 365 Power Platform and Cloud Security India user group, and join that. All right, so let's get started. So what do we have in store for you today? So today the agenda is I just want to focus on these five major things because. Uh, this is very, very important, right? So these are the five major, let's call it as pillars or, or five major points that you need to take care of even before, you know, uh, rolling out Copilot for Microsoft 365. When I say even before, uh, yeah, of course, the security is something which comes before. And then in terms of planning is when you have the license and how you go about planning the deployment and then the deployment in itself, how you would do the deployment. And let's say you've deployed, right? So now we need to uh, understand how uh, the application is being used. Are people really using it? Which applications are they using it on? And if they're not using it, what is that you can do to make sure that they use it? And also finally, how to manage Copilot for Microsoft 365, like similar to any other Microsoft 365 service, such as SharePoint, Exchange Teams, and OneDrive. You also have an admin console for managing Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I'll, and I'll be talking in detail about that. So that's our agenda, so let's get started. So the world around us is changing. So industries are transforming rapidly. The drivers for economic growth are evolving and technology is at an inflection point, right? So, and I'm pretty sure you all would agree to this and uh, and AI in itself is contributing to a lot of these changes, right? And if you look at the impact AI technology is having, right? So the AI technology, so if you look at the, the graph here, right? So. Uh, so mobile phone, it took about 16 years to reach, uh, you know, 100 million users benchmark. So internet took about seven years. Facebook took about 4.5 years, but chat GPT just took three months, right? So that data or that graph in itself talks about how much uh, uh, 
what's uh, you know how much impact AI is having in our day to day life, right? So, uh, and the impact that I'm talking about, it's real. Even if you look at the uh, graph towards your right hand side, you could see about the GDP growth multiplier per century, right? So these are really a great number, something that uh, you should really be taking a look at and understanding that whatever happening is real. This is not some uh, made up fantasy or not some made up number. Uh, so the impact that AI is bringing to the world out there is real. It's happening right now, and it's about time that we all, you know, jump on, jump in, and become a part of this journey. Uh, so one of the important thing for us to realize is so digital debt is costing us innovation. So what I mean by digital debt, right? So, uh, so here are some interesting stats that I would like to throw out there. More than 64 percentage of employees don't have enough time or energy to do their job, right? Another 57 percentage of employees spend time just in communicating, right? Another and the other important number is 43 percentage of employees spend time just in creating. Uh, so what I mean by so what, what I'm trying to say here is a lot of time just goes into keep doing the same mundane task repeatedly, wherein you could easily you know, delegate this task to an AI application such as Copilot for Microsoft 365 or any other AI application for that matter and focus your complete effort on things that matter to you the most, right? And we also, clear, and I'm pretty sure you all would agree to this, pretty much half of our day in, in, you know, simply goes on just, you know, reading through emails, responding to emails or creating documents or just repeating the same stuff repeatedly again and again and again. So how good that could be? How how about an AI application which can act as your personal assistant and it could do all this work for you so that you can focus on the one which really matters to you the most, right? So that's where Copilot for Microsoft 365 comes in handy. So Copilot for Microsoft 365 is the most powerful productivity tool on the planet. And these are the four components that come together to, you know, when which is what makes Copilot for Microsoft 365. So you have the large language models. Right. And then you have the Microsoft graph, which is nothing but your data. When I say your data, it is your emails, the SharePoint sites that you have access to, the documents that you have in your OneDrive for business. Right. So everything that you do within Microsoft 365 that belongs to you or anything that you have access to is what is a part of your Microsoft graph, which is why you say that it's your data. And then the Microsoft 365 apps that you use as a, as you know, like 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 your in your everyday work for things such as your Microsoft Word, right? Your Outlook client, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, you know, application, right? It could be the OneNote application. It could be Microsoft Loop. So all these Microsoft 365 apps, and finally the internet, right? So all these four components come together, and and maybe I could I could just go to an extent and say that these are the four building blocks that make that make up Copilot for Microsoft 365, right? So. Uh, the way this works is right. So every time you're giving an input in the form of a natural language, right? So the input, so you would give that input on any Microsoft 365 app. It could be Word, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, anything of that sort. So that prompt goes to the Copilot orchestrator, which which in return goes to the Microsoft Graph, which is your data, and then from that it goes to the uh, LLM to get the response that you need. And uh, and you know if at all you also want data coming in from the internet, even that is also possible. I'll be talking about that when I talk about the Copilot administration stuff, and then you get the uh, output back in the natural language. Of course, I'm trying to oversimplify this. If you look at the complete architecture diagram, uh, it would make a lot more sense about how these four components come together and 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 you know how they all uh, orchestrate and they give you the response that you need, right? Okay, so with that being said, let's come back to our core topic. Uh, let's try to uh, hit on the first pillar, which is securing your environment to get ready for Copilot, right? So. So these are some security concerns associated with AI usage, right? It's just not about Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I'm talking about any AI application for that matter. So insufficient visibility into the usage of AI applications can result in security and compliance challenges, and of course it does, right? So these are some challenges which uh, I want to put it out there. Users use unmanaged AI apps, potentially exposing organizations to risk, right? And secondly, the compromised user identity or overprivileged insider access sensitive data via AI, via AI applications. And thirdly, you know, users negligently share sensitive data such as PII in AI applications violating compliance requirements. So what I'm trying to say here is, you know, AI as an application, it's good. It's 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 really gonna uh, empower your you know what you do. But then 
we need to make sure that it's rolled out properly under proper guardrails and control, right? And as an organization, you need to make sure that whatever AI application that you're rolling out is rolled out in a proper manner. You cannot allow your users to use a different AI application which is not rolled out by rolled out by the IT, right? So if you take a look at often an example which I give is uh, the communications that we keep having through WhatsApp. For the life of me, I can't remember any or I haven't come across any organization which has said WhatsApp is your official communication channel, but still you would see a lot of users using WhatsApp to share information, right? Which is which means you're potentially putting the data out there at risk because for one, that is not the application which your IT team has approved. And then you're sharing some sensitive information out there which could easily get into wrong hands, right? Uh, the similar case with AI also, right? You need to make sure that your users are using the AI application which is sponsored by the organization's IT. And if at all they are not, to, not doing it, you know how can I have visibility on that, right? So that's what we'll be talking about as we move further. And other thing is the compromised user identity, right? Let's say for whatever reason the user's identity has compromised, right? Or maybe there is a user with a malicious intent who's trying to, uh, you know, play around with data, or maybe he's trying to move to a competitor and he's trying to steal some information before he goes there, right? And finally. Uh, Maybe negligently you're trying to share some sensitive data, right? It could be PI information about yourself or it could be the PI information about the customer that you're working with, right? And these are all possible when you are using an AI application. So there should be proper, uh, you know, security and compliance controls in place to make sure that the application is used in a proper manner. So for this, what Microsoft has to say is, so this is a shared responsibility when it comes to, uh, this is a shared responsibility between Microsoft and you as a customer, right? And I'm pretty sure you would have seen these diagrams when, when cloud came in for the very first time, right? Even today, if you go to the Microsoft Azure documentation and you try to look at it, that is a proper diagram that where Microsoft says, hey, this is, your responsibility as a customer. This is something that you need to take care of. And these are the things that we would be taking care of uh, as Microsoft, right? The same principle even applies here. Uh, so here, the access to the production environment and protecting the data. When I say data, the data that's kept at rest and in transit. What I mean by this is uh, all the SharePoint files, right? All the emails that you sent across. So any any sort of files that is shown in SharePoint, Exchange, Teams, or OneDrive, which is data at rest, right? I say data and transit, all the email communications that, that keeps happening, right? Uh, so these are this is the responsibility of Microsoft because uh, they because they are the ones who, uh, they are the custodian of, of your data, if I want to put it that way, right? Um, I'm sorry, Microsoft, I'm sorry about that. Microsoft is not the custodian of your data. They are the guardian of your data. I'm sorry, I just keep getting, getting confused with that. Sorry about that, right? And then this is your responsibility as an organization wherein you need to control the access to AI apps. Who can have access to these AI apps? What kind of AI apps is allowed in your organization? You need to make sure that you have proper, you have set up proper access control policies using the identity and access management solutions, which is basically your intra ID, right? And protect data entered and created by AI apps. Of course, when you start using Copilot for Microsoft 365, this is going to generate a lot, a lot, a lot of data, right? So how can you make sure that uh, the data that is being generated by this is protected properly, right? Uh, which is where the DLP controls and other thing comes into picture, which I'll be talking about at a later point. And final, finally, the user's accountability of AI use, right? Uh, so implement, implement proper AI security trainings, like this is how the AI application should be used. Right. Uh, so this is also something which you as an organization should be taking care of. So please, you know, take a look at this diagram. It's a shared responsibility wherein Microsoft owns certain things and you as an organization, you need to make sure that you own certain things. So so moving further, these are some questions which come up when you're using an AI application, right? So who's using AI applications and how are you governing access to AI apps in your organization, right? This is something which basically keeps coming up. What type of sensitive data are flowing into AI interactions and do the prompts adhere to organizational policies, right? So what type of AI apps are being used in your organizations? And finally, the output which the AI uh, application generate, right? So are AI outputs and interactions protected and well governed? So you would all agree that these are some concerns that you have as you start using Copilot for Microsoft 365, right? Because 
if you look at this application, you just go there, you give in a prompt and it generates the responses out there, which is cool, which is really good. You really like it. You want you want to make sure that you're using it as a part of the day to day work. But then what really happens behind the scenes, right? So are there properly are there are proper guardrails and control out there, right? So who is how can I control all this? How can I make sure that you know users are making proper usage of this AI application? Right. So for this, what Microsoft has to say is, you know, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is built on Microsoft's comprehensive approach towards security, compliance, and privacy, as well as responsible AI. So what we mean by this is, Copilot for Microsoft 365 was not built any different than, let's say, SharePoint Online, Exchange, Teams, or OneDrive, right? So the security, compliance, and privacy approach, which Microsoft took for that, the same applies for Copilot for Microsoft 365 also, or for any other Microsoft 365 application for that matter, right? So you don't need to be thinking that since this is an AI application, maybe there is a different approach which Microsoft took, took for this. Maybe they, are, they have built things differently. Well, of course, the architecture is, is a lot more complex and sophisticated as opposed to SharePoint Exchange Teams or OneDrive because there's an AI application, right? It needs a lot of compute and a lot of resources that needs to be spent on the back end on, on, on the Azure infrastructure. But the uh, when it comes to security compliance and privacy standards, it's exactly the same way. Nothing has changed. Um, and, and if at all you want to go back and read Microsoft's documentation about this, or like in terms of security compliance and privacy, please feel free to go ahead and do that also. And then there is another fourth component called as responsible AI. So this is where I want to bring up this particular link and talk about what do I mean by this responsible AI, uh, uh, you know, components, right? So these are th this is the six principles that Microsoft has laid out there when it comes to responsible AI. One is fairness. It needs to make sure that the AI system should treat all people fairly, right? Then reliability and safety. AI system should perform reliably and safely privacy and security AI system should be secure and respect privacy inclusiveness AI system should empower everyone and engage people transparency AI system should be understandable and finally accountability people should be accountable for AI systems right and I think it's it's very very important I'm really glad that an organization as Microsoft is really laying out their responsible AI principles out there right because just I think about a month back we all saw what happened with Google's AI application right I'm not trying to make an example out of Google just because this is a Microsoft event, but we all saw what happened with that and it and, and it really raised a lot of concerns, right? So so it's it's very, very important that uh, so any organization who is investing on AI, they, they follow these standards. And I'm really happy to see that Microsoft has laid out their responsible AI principles. So all these four things comes together and it's and these are the four core principles, which are, these are the four, uh, let's say the security compliance privacy as well as a responsible AI. These all four uh, make up Copilot for Microsoft 365. It's built on top of this comprehensive approach. So what is that you need to do as an organization or maybe if you're planning to roll out Copilot for Microsoft 365? I'm pretty sure you all would have been in this scenario wherein you've been given some 100 or 150 Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses now that it's GA and your organization has asked you to roll it out, right? Uh, and now you're probably wondering how do I go about this, right? Because if you go and look at the Microsoft's documentation that are just you know, hundreds of links, one link points to other, the next link points to other. So it's, it's so you would be spending days just reading through all of that, right? So this is where I'm trying to simplify things and tell that, hey, these are the four things that you need to make sure that in terms of securing your environment, just make sure that these four things are taken care of. So you should be good to go in terms of security, right? So first, make sure that you're, you're managing overprivileged and risky users using Microsoft Entra ID. Secondly, make sure that you're mitigating the device risk using Microsoft Intune. Thirdly, make sure that you're securing and count the data which is generated by AI applications using Microsoft Purview. And, and, uh, and, for, and the fourth one here is discover and control the use of AI apps using Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, right? And if you think about this, right, these are the things that you should have done anyway. Right. It doesn't mean that just because you're rolling out Copilot for Microsoft 365, now you need to go look at all this and make sure that you're trying to tighten up everything. Right. These are the things that you should have done that you should have done anyway. At least a mature organization should make sure that they've invested their time and effort in, in making sure that all these controls are out there. But 
think about it this year. At least now that you have Copilot for Microsoft 365, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is becoming an advocate for all these uh, other controls which you didn't bother to take a look at before. And now you need to make sure that you are going ahead and deploying this out there. So the first one is uh, gown access to Copilot using Microsoft Intra ID uh, because we are currently we are living in a world at least in the cloud world, right? So your identity is is, 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 the, is the first gate. Think of it as the first gate, right? Once that is compromised, then the user can get in and a, a user with a malicious intent or an attacker with a malicious intent, you can just get in and do whatever damage he wants to do, right? So please make sure that the login to Microsoft 365 is with single and managed corporate identity. Always uh, evaluate login attempts based on the user or group permissions, IP location. This is where you bring in conditional access based controls, right? Uh, and you can also decide access level with conditional access based policies. Let's say for whatever reason, I'm trying to log in to my corporate account from India. So within 10 minutes from now, I'm trying to log in from Chicago, right? It's not quite, it's not humanly possible for me to travel to Chicago within 10 minutes and try to log in from that. So which, so the system is very smart enough to understand that this is an impossible travel. So this, there is something wrong going on with this particular uh, login attempt. And it's simply gonna, uh, you know, challenge me by saying that, hey, please give me the MFA. I think that's how there is something wrong going on here. Or it's simply gonna say that, I'm sorry, I can't allow you in because I think this is, there's something going on with this particular login, right? So. Those kind of controls are possible using your conditional access policies, which is part of your Microsoft Intra ID. And lastly, monitor critical events and issue access tokens that can be revoked immediately. So please make sure that these, at least these uh, basic controls are out there in your Microsoft Intra ID. Please do invest on uh, conditional access policies if you haven't done already, uh, and make sure that you configure all these policies because now you're going to bring in this. Uh, few great AI application called as Copilot for Microsoft 365. And it's, it's, it's about time that you make sure that all these uh, security controls are rolled out. So the next one is now that we spoke about the identity, let's spoke about that. I'm sorry, let's speak about the device. So how, how do we go about mitigating the device risk? So this is where the Microsoft Intune comes into picture, which is your, uh, which is the MDM and MAM solution in the Microsoft 365 family. So ensure that the Microsoft 365 apps are securely installed on the user's device and kept up to date. Uh, for you to use Copilot for Microsoft 365 in your organization, uh, the M365 apps for enterprise, meaning your uh, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and all the Office applications, they need to be on a particular update level, right? So uh, they need to be on a proper update channel. Um, I think it's uh, either monthly enterprise or current channel. You could be in one of these channels. I don't think the semi-annual channel supports Copilot for Microsoft 365. So please make sure that that is being taken, that that's at least that's the update channel which all the endpoints are currently on. And limit the use of work apps, including Copilot on personal device. So, uh, so this is where you can tell that all the devices should be logged into Intune and users can access their corporate resources only from their uh, corporate device and not from personal device. And these are policies that you can configure using Microsoft Intune. And also you can implement app protection policies, right? So, so things such as uh, users cannot copy content, uh, let's say from their Outlook client in their mobile and paste it on WhatsApp, for example. So those kind of controls can be implemented, right? And finally, for whatever reason, if a user's device is lost, you can you can just remotely wipe the entire device. So all these things are possible using your using Microsoft Intune. So now thirdly, let's talk about how to secure and count data in Copilot interactions. I'm pretty sure a lot of you would have seen a demo on what uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot can do in Teams, uh, Exchange, uh, I'm sorry, Outlook, uh, PowerPoint, uh, Excel, so on and so forth. It can generate a lot of data, but how do we make sure that there is, uh, you know, these data are secure and count properly, right? So that's where Microsoft Purview comes into picture. So specifically the Microsoft Purview, you know, it has, uh, it has a solution called as information protection, which is mainly meant to, uh, you know, protect all the information that's being generated out there. So in, in this case, let's talk about how it can protect the information generated by Copilot for Microsoft 365. Um, so a couple of things here. So 
um, let's say co-pilot whatever data it generates. Now, say for instance, in your organization, right? Think of a scenario here. Uh, you have rolled out uh, Microsoft Information Protection and it is planned to, and maybe you have defined a keyword, right? So whatever document has this keyword, it should be classified as highly confidential. Right, so now if you're going to uh, co-pilot and if you're trying to uh, give that same keyword and if you're trying to ask it to generate a document, right? Uh, so of course, when it generates the response itself, it's going to come up with that sensitivity label. So co-pilot understands and, and those things are already honored there. So in this way, a lot of things can be taken care of. I'll be talking in detail about, uh, you know, how about auditing, how about e-discovery, right? Uh, a lot of these things because uh, since you, you'll be a lot of your users are going to be using Copilot uh, in, in, in all these Microsoft 365 applications. So how you can audit that, right? How you can make sure that there is proper usage of Copilot as an application in your organization, right? How, is there any unauthorized use of it? Are, uh, you know, are people making sure that they are they, they are properly adhering to the organizational policies? Are they trying to make a wrong usage of this application? And uh, you know how you can go about auditing all that. And if at all you want to perform e discovery and co-pilot interactions, how you can go about it, right? And what about communication compliance? Is that something that you can do? Yes, of course, that is very well possible. And I'll be showing us a quick demo on that at a later point. And also, if at all you are looking at, uh, maybe I want to roll out some retention policies, right? So today, retention policies are possible for your SharePoint, Exchange, pretty much anything inside Microsoft 365. So a uh, co-pilot for Microsoft 365 is no different. You can roll out retention policies for that too. And I'll be showing a demo on that as well. And finally, um, how can I discover and control the use of AI apps? For that, the, the product that I want to put out there is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, right? So this, this very product from Microsoft, it has a good history. This is nothing but the CASP, uh, the Cloud Access Security Broker, Microsoft's CASP solution. It had a lot of names in the past. I think it was called as uh, Microsoft Cloud Apps Security before, and now it is called as Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. And, and it's, it's basically going to discover and access uh, pretty much all the uh, clouds, cloud applications that uh, that has been rolled out of there or whatever cloud applications people are making use of. So in this particular scenario here, uh, you know, the Defender for Cloud Apps, it can uh, access, assess your environment and it can tell and it can catch if there is any unauthorized use of any AI apps. Uh, and if anything of that sort is that, maybe you can just blow, go ahead and block such AI apps so that your users are not using it. You remember the scenario where I spoke about users using um, uh, um, WhatsApp for, for, for you know, for uh, communicating uh, among themselves, right? So that can also be found using different of a cloud apps. So similar way, if there is any unauthorized use of any AI apps, that can also be found using your different of a cloud apps. All right. So Finally, so these are all the security and compliance controls for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So at a very high level, if you're asking me, well, Vignesh, in terms of securing my environment, what are the four things that I need to take care of? So firstly, make sure that uh, for Microsoft Entra ID, you have rolled out all those controls. Uh, secondly, let's talk about device. In device, make sure that you have configured all the necessary policies required in Microsoft Intune. Thirdly, when it comes to the data that is being generated from Copilot for Microsoft 365, make sure that you're leveraging the Microsoft purview solutions, uh, things such as the information protection, right? So, and uh, make sure that the sensitive informations are, uh, you know, are classified properly. So that's possible using your Microsoft purview information protection. And finally, if at all you want to discover the, uh, you know, the usage of any unauthorized AI apps, that's possible using your Microsoft Defender for Cloud App. So these should be the four things that you need to be taking a look at in terms of securing your tenant so that it's ready uh, to onboard Copilot for Microsoft 365. Okay. Now in terms of licensing, so uh, you know for the baseline security is Office 365 E3, uh, if at all you have that, and then you can purchase Copilot on top of that and take advantage of all the uh, security controls which your Office 365 E3 has to offer, such as your multi-factor authentication, uh, manual sensitivity in terms of uh, the IP and also rolling out retention labels. Now let's take one step ahead and if at all you're having, if at all your organization has Microsoft 365 E3 and you have purchased Copilot as an add-on on top of it, then you can look at implementing core security controls wherein uh, think about conditional access, uh, right? So device-based conditional access so that you can uh, challenge a user's login. 
uh, then uh, of course with this you get the manual sensitivity label so that you can configure the sensitivity labels and those are applied uh, on, on the files. And also you also get the uh, unified endpoint management capabilities, which is nothing but your Intune on your Microsoft Defender for endpoint. And if you're talking and if you have Microsoft E5, then congrats, you get the best in class security controls. So let's say you have E5 and you have purchased Copilot as an add-on on top of that, then you can do a lot. Uh, you could do users and session risk using your uh, you know intra ID plan two capabilities, right? Uh, and and uh, then you can also roll out automatic sensitivity labels, which because with E5 you get AIP plan too. Remember the example which I spoke about, wherein you could say that in your organization you could define a keyword, and you can say that uh, any document which has this keyword should uh, be considered as a highly sensitive file, right? Something of that sort. And uh, even in terms of discovering the usage of unauthorized AI apps using Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, so that's also possible using that. So this is how you need to go about, uh, you know, in terms of uh, securing your uh, environment for Copilot for Microsoft 365. All right, now let's move on and talk about how to plan for Copilot for Microsoft 365 deployment. So now that we've looked at how to secure, now let's talk about the next part, which is planning uh, for Copilot for Microsoft 365 deployment. So this is the uh, logical architecture, and, and this is something which I really like, right? So if you look at the real architecture for Copilot for Microsoft 365, it's, it's quite confusing. There are a lot of moving parts out there, and you really need to read through and pay close attention to understand how things work. But this logical architecture, at least personally to me, I found it, I find it very easy to understand. So on the top, you can see the user and the device, right? So and 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 they're trying. The user is trying to interact with any those Microsoft 365 apps, which is Teams or it could be Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or the uh, or the uh, OneNote. I'm sorry, or the Outlook client. And then from that, whatever prompt they give, it goes to the Copilot Microsoft 365 Copilot orchestration engine. So from that, the response, the, the prompt, it goes to the Microsoft Graph, which is nothing but your data. And, it, and you also have the semantics index for Core Copilot, which is going to help to map your data and relationships. And it is going to help to provide more personalized responses to you. Uh, right, and from that, when I say your data, it's pretty much all the data which is stored in, let's say, in, in your OneDrive, in your, uh, or, or maybe in your Teams, uh, you know, uh, SharePoint sites that you have access to, all the documents, document libraries, uh, pretty much anything that you have access to on SharePoint, all the Teams chat conversations, the Teams channel conversations, or the files that are kept on Microsoft Teams that you have access to, and all the emails and the documents that have been shared on Exchange Online, right? So this is the organizational data. So all this, it all comes together, and this is how you get the response uh, response when your uh, response back on your uh, M365 app. And also, this is the service and tenant logical architecture. So if at all, we just spoke about the Microsoft's uh, spoke about Microsoft's response for security, uh, compliance, and privacy, right? So, uh, so if you take a good look at this, of course, your devices and users they are they are outside, they are there on the internet, right? And then these apps and apps are installed on or are, are installed on your devices, but remaining everything itself, right? So it's within the Microsoft 365 service boundary. Now, what I mean by this is, as I was saying before, right? Copilot for Microsoft 365, it was not built differently. The approach for this was not that uh, I would host this service somewhere elsewhere. Uh, it is not within the same tenant where my SharePoint exchange team stuff is kept. That's not how it is, right? Everything is within the Microsoft 365 service boundary only. And, uh, and, and there is also an instance of Azure Open AI, which gets spinned up when Copilot for Microsoft 365, when you subscribe for, but it doesn't mean that you get access to that. It's just that a Copilot for Microsoft 365, since it, of course, it needs to go to Azure Open AI to, to process for the for the LLM and stuff, right? So, uh, so it, go, it goes there, it gets the information, and then it how it generates. But the point that I'm trying to make is, this entire thing that you see here, it's within the Microsoft 365 service boundary, and that is nothing which goes outside. Uh, and Microsoft doesn't take any data. They don't train your data. They don't try to bring in. Uh, they don't try to take your information outside, process it somewhere, and then they don't try to bring it inside and give it back to you. So that's what exactly I'm trying to mean here. Now, in terms of, uh, let's talk about uh, if you're somebody who's coming from a security background, and if you look, and what is the zero trust approach for Copilot for Microsoft 365, right? So these are the areas that you need to protect. So identity and access. I think we were just talking about this in these in the previous slides. 
If at all you have E3, just make sure that you're configuring common conditional access policies. And if at all you have E5, uh, configure recommended policies for zero trust. In terms of the Microsoft 365 apps, right? So make sure that you've implemented the Intune app protection policy so that uh, when users are trying to copy a content and paste it on a different app, so that can be blocked. Uh, devices, of course, you can start managing your devices using Intune, and you can also, if you have E5 monitor device risk and compliance with security baselines, where you can go ahead and do those things also. In terms of threat protection, uh, of course, you can configure your, your Exchange Online protection and endpoint protection, which I'm talking about your EOP and your Defender for uh, endpoint. But if at all you have E5, you can start investing on uh, Microsoft 365 Defender. I think now it's Microsoft, uh, yeah, Microsoft 365 Defender. I think then now it's called as Microsoft Defender XDR. So just so you know. And finally, in terms of organizational data, whatever data that's being generated by Copilot for Microsoft 365 to have so develop your classification schema and get started with sensitivity labels and other policies, right? So if at all you're an organization who haven't really invested on MIP before Microsoft Information Protection, at least now make sure that you're investing on it. You, you start configuring all those uh, you know, policies, uh, labels, and you start rolling that out because now with Copilot for Microsoft 365, a lot of data is going to be generated and you need to make sure that those files or PowerPoint presentations or chat conversations or whatever carry the proper label so that the people, so that the users who are seeing it, they know how to make use of it, right? You do not want your users, uh, you know, sharing something which is highly confidential outside your organization, which could uh, put, uh, you know, your brand in big trouble. So please make sure that you're rolling out that. Um, and if at all you have E5, so extend policies to more data, begin using automation, automate, automation with data protection. So this is where you, if at all you have uh, AIP plan two, you can go ahead and configure, uh, you know, automatic sensitivity labels so that here in this case, it would scan through a document and if it detects this sensitive keywords, and there are a lot of uh, scenarios that you can come up with, right? It'll, it'll simply mark the document as highly confidential. I'm just giving an example out there, but in, in, in reality, you can go ahead and configure it, uh, you know, based on your need. All right. So how about uh, you know setting up your secure file sharing and collaboration with Microsoft Teams, right? So uh, for the highest protection, right? At least make sure that for very few teams in your organization, when I say teams, the Microsoft Teams that you have rolled out or that you are trying to apply a high protection label to it, right? Because think of it, it could be having some, uh, let's say, a lot of PII information, highly confidential information, right? And of course, in organizations there are a bunch of uh, Microsoft Teams which has this sort of data. So please make sure that these teams have a proper label applied to it, so that uh, you know the data inside this also gets that. And then in terms of for some teams you can apply sensitive protection, uh, and then for most teams in your organization you can apply the baseline protection. So think of it in three different uh, uh, buckets. So very few teams, I mean, of course, this is something that you need to, I mean, you would only know in your organization who, what are these teams which has uh, high sensitive information. If not, work with a proper team, uh, go ahead and work with the business, uh, and try to ask questions. This is where you can go ahead and conduct workshops, uh, try to understand, you know, which are those, uh, you know, five or 10 teams for that particular business unit or department which has those high sensitive information and then you can start applying those uh, you know sensitivity labels to those teams and then you can talk to them and ask okay which are the ones which has you know a little bit of less sensitive information and then you can start applying a less sensitive label to them right and then finally the rest all other teams you can just apply a baseline protection to them right so this way you're making sure that uh, you're securing all those uh, the entire microsoft teams uh, which which in return would uh, protect all the channel documents, channel conversations, everything inside it. Next, let's talk about how to plan your pilot and deploying teams, right? So um, this is something which is very important, right? So any application for that matter, it has to go through a proper uh, phase. You cannot just do a big bang. Uh, don't even get into that just because somebody is forcing you to do it right that is not at all the right way to go ahead and deploy any application for that matter that should be a proper uh, evaluation done first wherein you understand you ask the proper questions to microsoft or whomever is your microsoft partner you want to get ask as many questions as possible you know try to evaluate that in your tenant maybe with a bunch of users 
uh, see what it means, uh, try to pull users from different departments, you know, try to give them a co-pilot for Microsoft 365 license, or maybe you do your evaluation first, and then you do a pilot. Uh, and the pilot it may differ from different organizations right like if you're if you're a big organization then let's say you want to do a pilot with let's say with 500 users right and then you have to pick and choose these 500 users this is where you would work with them uh, let's say you're picking 50 users from each department are you giving them a co-pilot license uh, and then you do the pilot so that you can get the feedback and you see how things are working out there and once you're comfortable with this and uh, you know uh, and you ask for proper feedback you see the result it generates so on and so forth and then is where you could go ahead and do a full deployment right so this should, this should be the approach that you should be taking when deploying copilot for microsoft 365 um, and this exact same thing so in terms of identity and access so make sure that for the evaluation phase you identify 50 users for testing in terms of device Test the device protection with the same 50 users and you know apply the copilot for microsoft 365 license to those 50 users right and then in terms of pilot you can identify the next 50 to 100 users in the production environment apply device protection to the same users and then apply the copilot for microsoft 365 license and then in terms of full deployment is where you would go ahead and apply protection to the rest of all the users uh, in your organization or if that is a proper phase wise approach about how you want to go about it i know uh, each organization has a different change management approach right so just go ahead so just talk to the relevant team understand how they want to go about it I, you know i totally understand in large organizations it's just not your call right so there are a lot of decisions which needs to happen so please make sure that you're, you're proffering a proper phase wise approach okay so in terms of planning your pilot and deployment teams right so uh, at least in terms of uh, you know take the technical adoption of information protection what i mean is in terms of uh, rolling out your microsoft information protection sensitivity labels right the major problem with a lot of organizations today is they themselves don't understand what is their own what is sensitive data what is the sensitive data that they have of course, a lot of organizations know that they have a lot of sensitive information, which is uh, employees, PII information, customers, PII information, highly confidential projects, uh, which something or some of these could be their own IPs. And that is a lot of such sensitive information which any organization would have out there. But have they done a good job in identifying this and classifying it? Not really. Not a lot of organizations would have done that properly. Right. So now it's about time that since you're bringing Copilot for Microsoft 365 and it's going to generate a lot of these data and a lot of these data is going to come from all these informations, right? So, so this is where you need to make sure that you're deploying all the information protection labels. So that's a proper uh, uh, approach here, stepwise approach. So discover and identify the sensitive business data then develop a classification and protection schema then test and pilot the schema with data in microsoft 365 right so make sure that once you have uh, you know you've developed the schema and you can just go ahead and just uh, deploy this in for the data in microsoft 365 then deploy the classification and protection schema to data across microsoft 365 so this is where you would uh, you know co configure those um, policies and then configure the labels and then you would start uh, you know uh, you know pushing out those labels out there and then extend the schema to data in other SaaS apps right of course in, a, in an organization you're just not going to have microsoft 365 alone right and copilot for microsoft 365 has a good extensibility capability also which i'm not covering in this presentation but of course you can take a look at it you can go to microsoft learn and read in detail about it so if at all you want data from those applications also to come in uh, so then how you can extend the schema, I mean the information protection labels and other things to those to the data which is kept in those SaaS apps also. And again, continue to discover and protect data in other repositories based on your priorities. So this is the uh, stepwise approach that you need to you know, follow in terms of information protection. Then the third pillar here which I want to talk about is deploying Copilot for Microsoft 365. We spoke about securing, then we spoke about how you need to plan things before the deployment. And now we are going to talk about deployment in itself. Let's say now you got the license, it's out there, right? So how you go about uh, rolling, you know, giving the license and, and the deployment. So 
the moment you get a license, so this is this is a walkthrough that you would get to see. So in terms of assigning the licenses is pretty simple, similar to any other Microsoft 365 apps. Uh, if at all you wanted to group based licensing, you could do it or if at all you're using PowerShell scripts to do it, even that is also possible. So the moment a license is applied, the user would get a welcome email and the welcome email will talk about what Copilot Microsoft 365 Copilot is all about. What are the capabilities that they can unlock using it? So on and so forth, right? Uh, and then there is also I think this assessment is already out there. So this is a tenant wide uh, assessment. You can also talk to your Microsoft partners because I see that a lot of Microsoft partners have this assessment as a package itself. Uh, and what this basically does is it, it, it checks your tenant to make sure that you have the proper licensing requirements. What I mean by this is for you as an organization to uh, purchase Copilot for Microsoft 365, you should be on a proper base license first. For a long time, I, 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 when I talk to a lot of customers, right, they tend to think that Copilot for Microsoft 365 is something which is included in Microsoft 365 E5, right? I mean, you, you would think so, right? I mean, it would be better if it was that way, but that's not really the case. Copilot for Microsoft 365 is something which always has to be purchased as an add-on. And for you to purchase as an add-on, you should be in a proper base license. Only you, only then you can purchase Copilot for Microsoft 365 as an add-on on top of it. So this is where the licensing requirement comes in. Then the technical requirements uh, are in a lot of, let's say, your endpoints, uh, your, your networks, right? Uh, uh, firewalls, pretty much a lot of work goes into it. You need to make sure that whatever whatever needs to be whitelisted is whitelisted. Your devices are running the proper operating system. Uh, the uh, the uh, Microsoft Office applications which are installed in your computer, they are on the right update channel and there is a lot that you need to think about, right? Whether whether the Teams is running the new client version, what about Outlook? There is a lot which goes into the technical requirements. Then addressing the security and privacy requirements, which I think uh, I was spending a lot of time talking about it. And then also the usage guidelines, defining a pr the proper usage. So this would differ from organization to organization. Maybe in highly regulated industries, uh, you want to have a proper usage guideline of Copilot for Microsoft 365. Maybe you want to lay out proper standards out there saying that, well, this is how you should be using this particular uh, application, right? So so a lot. So this assessment is, uh, is out there, or maybe you can also work with a Microsoft partner so that they can help you with that. These are some uh, prerequisites for using Copilot for Microsoft 365. So uh, I think as long as you're having a Microsoft, as long as you're using Microsoft 365 in your uh, environment, you should be good, right? So uh, basically what it says is you should be running Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise and you should be on the proper update channel. Then of course, Microsoft Entra ID, uh, which is your identity, which is your uh, identity solution thing that you would use to log into your environment. Then Microsoft OneDrive, because anything that gets generated, any Word document or anything that gets generated, it goes and sits inside your Microsoft OneDrive. A Microsoft Outlook, because you want to use Copilot uh, in Microsoft Outlook, where it can summarize emails, it can write emails for you. I think now, I think in a few months back, only the new Outlook client supported Microsoft uh, Copilot, but now even I think the classic Outlook client also supports it. And this is something which uh, you know you can go ahead and take a look at it. But uh, but but please make sure. But please understand that uh, you know the Outlook client now supports Copilot for Microsoft 365. Then Microsoft Teams, it's recommended to have the new Teams client. Microsoft Loop, I'm not sure how many users, how many of you have tried this. If not please, please, please do yourself a favor and start playing around with this. This is really wonderful, really great. If you're into project management and stuff, there is a lot of great templates out there. You know, things that could have been that could easily take days or weeks is possible using just a couple of clicks. So please, please start looking at it. And then also Microsoft Whiteboard. Uh, if at all you're looking for some brainstorming and stuff, you can also use Copilot for Microsoft 365 there as well. So in terms of cost, uh, now that this is this is where uh, the tough part comes in, right? So, so Copilot for Microsoft 365 it comes at a price of three sixty dollars, three hundred sixty dollars per user per year. Well, of course, that is a monthly cost, which is thirty uh, US dollars per user per month. But you don't get to purchase it only for a month or two, and then say, no, I don't want this anymore, right? So, so it's a commitment. If at all you're going for it, it should be purchased for the entire year. 
uh, and if and if at all you think about this right it makes sense because microsoft needs to make sure that they are investing on the infrastructure also on the back end right so once so there is a lot of things once you subscribe for copilot for microsoft 365 there are there is an azure open ai instance and there is a lot of other uh, azure infrastructure which needs to be spinned up on your uh, on your tenant uh, so that you get the copilot for microsoft 365 capabilities so the point that i'm trying to make is if at all you're going for it it's a yearly commitment it's not just a monthly commitment wherein you just use it for one or two months and then you say that i'm not interested on this i don't need this anymore <laughs> So in terms of licensing, so these are all the licenses which support Copilot for Microsoft 365 as an add-on. Uh, the other day I was presenting in a different event out there and a lot of uh, attendees, they thought that, well, as long as they have this, they get Copilot for Microsoft 365, right? So that's not what it is. So these are all the base licenses on top of which you can purchase Copilot for Microsoft 365 as an add-on. All right, now let's talk about, let's say you rolled it out. Now let's talk about how to monitor the usage of Microsoft 365, right? So this is really, really key because, um, so any application that you have rolled out, you need to make sure that the users are really using it, right? So, uh, so how, how are they even making use of it? How is the adoption happening, right? And if it's not really being adopted properly, so you need to take the necessary measures because there is a lot of money that has been invested on this and you need to make sure that the users are using it so that they can give you proper feedback. Right. And there are proper ways to go ahead and look at this. So for this, let me go to the uh, Microsoft 365 admin center here. So I'm on the admin center and I have an option here which says reports and then I click on usage. And I see an option here which says reports, right? And here I have an option for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So one is the uh, readiness that it talks about the readiness about the tenant in itself, right? Uh, so mine is just a demo tenant. It just has one co-pilot for Microsoft 365 license. Uh, so this is what, but, but in a real production environment, you would be seeing a lot of information here, right? In terms of usage, uh, this is where you can go ahead and get as granular as possible. I really like the way how Microsoft has uh, you know, kept this, uh, like, like, like for instance, right? You could see how many users are enabled and what are the active users, right? So any app, so in Word, which means this is the usage of Copilot for Microsoft 365 in Microsoft Word as an application, right? Similar way for PowerPoint, Outlook. I haven't really used the Copilot capability in one more team, so which is why you're not seeing a blue bar there. You can also see the trends here, uh, and I can also see per app, Word, PowerPoint, and I can keep if, if I look at loop, I haven't used it in loop yet. So this is why this is why you're not seeing anything. So a lot of these, uh, you know, reports, uh, meaningful reports are out there, which uh, I want you to start taking a look at. Uh, and there is also a Microsoft. Uh, uh, I think the Microsoft Copilot dashboard. This is also something that you can configure in your tenant, and this is this would also give good insights about the usage of uh, for my Copilot for Microsoft 365 in your environment. OK, so now with that, let's talk about managing Copilot for Microsoft 365. OK, so here I think we're almost towards the end of our presentation. So, you know, in the beginning, as I was talking about, right? So similar to any other product uh, in the Microsoft 365 family, such as your SharePoint, Exchange, Teams and OneDrive. Uh, so that is a proper. Uh, admin as an admin there are there are certain controls that you can uh, enable and disable for copilot for microsoft 365 of course at this point there is there is i mean you don't get a uh, like a proper admin center such as your sharepoint exchange teams uh, and stuff for copilot for microsoft 365 maybe that's in the work it could come later but i'll talk about some controls that is already available out there just give me quick let me get to it OK, for this. We click on home. Yeah, let me click on pilot. Manage everything related to copilot view insights about how people are using learning about and learning about copilot assign license, find training, change settings and more. So this is basically 
that one, st one single stop shop, if you will, that wherein you can go and control the co-pilot for Microsoft 365's behavior for, for your tenant, right? We click on settings, you would see a lot of options here. The first one, co-pilot for Microsoft 365 uh, feedback logs. I haven't done anything here, but this is for you uh, to enable these feedback logs. Uh, co-pilot in Bing, Edge and Windows. Uh, this is I'm talking about the Microsoft uh, co-pilot with commercial data protection, right? So which was formerly called as Bing chat for enterprise. So you can uh, come here and take a look at this. A lot of organizations they have to say at least in the organization which I work for this has been disabled uh, and it depends from organization to organization about how you want to go about this. The main important piece is data security and compliance. So this is where you could see these are all the different Microsoft purview solutions uh, that are out there that can control or uh, you know in specifically in terms of uh, you know this you can look at all the different policies out there to control um, the usage of Microsoft uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. So sensitivity labels, retention policies, communication compliance, audit, and e-discovery. I'll, I'll just do a quick demo on this in about a minute. Uh, so improved response. So if at all you want data from internet also to be surfaced on the result which gets generated by Copilot for Microsoft 365, you can control that here. It's just a checkbox. Then just go ahead and make use of this checkbox and uh, you can control those behaviors here. OK, so if I uncheck this, so there won't be any response coming in from the web content. Finally, plugins. Uh, so this is where the uh, extensibility story comes in. Uh, so if at all you want to allow plugins uh, uh, you know, in, uh, uh, out there so that you can get data from other applications also, right? Uh, I, but of course, I would encourage you all to go ahead and read in detail about the extensibility for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So you have, a, you have the option of going with plugins or you have the option of going with Microsoft uh, Search, uh, uh, Microsoft Graph, I'm sorry, Microsoft Search uh, Graph Connectors. So that is also something that you can invest upon. But as I said in this session, I'm not talking in detail about it, but that is something which I would encourage you all to go ahead and take a look at it. But here you have an option to control the plugins, whether you don't want your users to use these plugins and so on and so forth. Really sorry about that. I had a a call which I had to pick. Sorry about that. OK. Already so I'll just quickly show you a quick demo on the um, the Microsoft purview controls and then we should be good to close. So for that, let me go to Microsoft uh, Compliance Admin Center. Let me show you a couple of things. Because this really gets asked, and this is really, really important when you're using uh, an application such as Copilot for Microsoft 365. Uh, for that, so the first piece, let me go to audit. So if at all you want to audit what, what users are doing with Copilot for Microsoft 365, right? I'm pretty sure this is the case for any other Microsoft 365 application also, and you can do the same for Copilot as well. So for this, you can choose the activity. I'll click on activity and Copilot, let me see. Yeah, interacted with Copilot. So this is the option that you can check and then you can fill in the other. If you want to look for a specific user, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that you can go ahead and do here, right? To get as many, to get as granular as possible. And then you can uh, pull out the report out there, right? So this is in terms of audit, you can go ahead and do this. Uh, and in terms of e discovery, if at all you're running, if at all you want to create an e discovery case, uh, specific to uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. You can go ahead and do this also. Uh, let me create quickly create a case here. I'm going to call this as Copilot Data 2. Well, you had to put in a number. Just go ahead and do that. Maybe it should be a ticket number, or if at all you have a different application, then you have to enter the number. Just go ahead and put in the right number here. Next. I'm just going to leave all this as it is, and I'm going to click on next. Click on submit.
done. Now, let me get into this case. A collections, new collection. Let me give it the same name just for the demo purpose. I keep promoting with this. Next, custodians, I'm going to select all. On cust select all. I'm going to say exchange mailbox. SharePoint sites. Uh, the other things I'm just going to keep it off. Click on next. So this is where you need to choose things properly. If I'm using KQL, uh, select a filter. I'm going to give type. Select an operator equal any of and choose the value as. Copilot. This is what you could choose, right? And uh, if at all you want to do it with KQL, I mean, if at all you want to see the KQL equivalent of this, this is what it's basically doing. Right? Uh, I can't be empty. Okay. Mm. I'm spoke before. Will any of Okay, so it says you have used filters that will not apply to a specific workload filters from SharePoint. Okay, maybe that explains it because SharePoint still doesn't have the copilot for Microsoft 365 functionality yet. Click on continue. Uh, yeah, and this is what it is, right? If I want to go back, if I want to see the KQL equivalent of this, so this is what basically it is, right? So if you are somebody who's uh, who wants to play around with KQL, you can go and you know use your KQL editor and do it. I click on next, continue, and then I'm going to click on submit. So this is basically how you would go ahead and create, uh, you know, an e-discovery case using e-discovery premium. Uh, you know, for Copilot for Microsoft 365. And the next thing which I want to show you is we spoke about audit. We spoke about this and in terms of retention, right? So if I want to roll out retention policies. Uh, Come on. Okay, so new retention policy. I'm going to call this as copilot data. Uh, next, full directory. I'll keep it as static. Uh, you see an option here which says Teams chat and copilot interactions, right? If I turn this on. Uh, this is specific to Copilot interactions. Uh, keeping it for all users. Next, and you can define whatever the retention period should be. Next, and you can click on submit. Yeah. Okay. So we spoke about all this, and even in terms of communication, already exists. But I, I hope you get the picture because there is already a retention policy with the same name. But I hope you get the picture of what I'm trying to say here. And then if I want to do a communication compliance, even that is also possible. If I want to create a communication compliance policy. Uh, let me go to. But of course, what I'm planning to do is I'll do a proper demo of all these Microsoft purview controls specific to Copilot for Microsoft 365 so that I can show you the results also. But this is just uh, in the interest of time and trying to be as quick as possible. You can also there is an option here detect copilot for Microsoft 365 interactions and it will start detecting it. So so the point that I'm trying to make is all this is possible. So you know all these controls are out there. So once you roll out copilot for Microsoft 365, you can start uh, looking at these controls and you can start configuring them. OK, so we looked at so with that, thanks a lot, folks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for being wonderful audiences. So I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, which is Pentara Technologies and Rapid Circle, and also our promotional partners, which is Viva Explorers team.
right? Uh, so as I said, this session should have given you at least a decent amount of insight on how to get your enterprise ready for Copilot for Microsoft 365. So from here after, I plan to do a lot many uh, session recordings on Copilot for Microsoft 365. I'll try to go from level zero to level 300, where we, where we talk about um, some end user level stuff about how they can use it, then some admin level stuff about what are the different admin controls that they can configure, then in terms of security controls, uh, then in terms of deployment, there is a lot that I have planned. So please, please make sure that you don't miss out on that. But thanks a lot. And uh, you know, I'll, I'm looking forward to see you all in a different session. Thank you.